Well, I was finally able to get the two seals installed on this thing without destroying them. Uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up taking some brass shim stock and making a sleeve that I held around that ridge right there that was giving me the trouble so that as the seal was going on it was able to slide over that ridge so that ridge that little ridge right there is what kept flipping the seal and ruining it now the interesting thing is when I installed the second seal on top of the first one that's seated all the way down as far as it'll go and it barely clears that ridge so this second seal really doesn't seem to be doing a heck of a lot but that's the way it was hmm. well anyways I'm ready to put this together and see if it leaks so in order for me to put the uh, stump jumper and uh, assembly back onto the bush hog I need a key to go on the shaft and the key that it calls for according to the parts manual is 7 16 by 1 inch and I just checked that groove and it looks like uh, that's what it calls for it's gonna be it's gonna be loose because the grooves are damaged the key that it took out of there which I have since gotten rid of um, I don't know if you recall but I had shown that that key was completely deformed from years of that just beating on that thing so Anyways, so I need 7 16 inch stock, key stock, which I don't have. But I went and looked through all my lathe tooling, and I have a 7 16 inch piece of lathe tooling, which is plenty long enough. So I'm going to cut an inch out of this and make a key. But this is tool steel. So this is going to be not something I can just cut so I'm gonna have to grind this matter of fact this might even be even better than regular old tool steel well it doesn't say cobalt or anything on it it just says Osborne SOBV of Sheffield England so that's definitely good quality steel maybe this is too hard for you know doing the job of a key but it's what I've got so <laughs> but uh I thought that's what was broken. No, I fixed the leaf blower, but the leaf blower, all that can do is blow it over there. You know, I blow it right. all around. I can blow uh, it. So you're trying to think, fix the thing that's on the tractor. The thing that the goes tractor. in the back of that tractor that sucks them up and grinds right. them up, because then that way you can drive them out there and just spread them on the field. That's what I want to fix for, for that. Because a, a good used one, if you find one, the 750 bucks, I think, the last time I saw one. Yep. It's bigger though. You can tow it behind it, you know, it's like a little wagon yeah. with a thing. But still, it's not cheap. They're pretty expensive new, so. All right. much better than that.
All right, got my new key put in there, and uh, all that's left to do now is I got to put on. Oh darn it! Came over here with the uh, nut, and I forgot that plate that goes on here. I gotta walk back over to the house. So this is that plate, which was welded on here, and this weld broke. But I'm not going to bother re-welding it because it only acts as a spacer. It's not going to really improve things structurally if I weld that on there. Now that looks pretty horrible. Space is huge here and then as I spin it around it tightens up a lot. But that's because I'm using the bottom of this as a flat reference and it's not flat. This is pushed in. Actually that shouldn't make a difference should it? Uh, this stump jumper is all screwy. If the space is different here and it's different here when it's not rotated, then it, you could blame it on not this area not being flat. But if I just pick a point on here as a reference point and the space changes, then it's this thing that's out of whack. It's way out of whack. Oh, well. The good news is at the end of where this bar is located, where the actual cutters are going to be, the space stays pretty much the same from here to 180 degrees around here. That's good. That means that bar is pretty straight. All right, I should have brought something to stick through this hole like this so that I can keep this from turning and tighten this more. All right, let's see if the screwdriver can take the force. <laughs> That's pretty good. also it's a reverse thread it's a left hand thread so that as it's spinning the torque's going to want to make that not 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 loosen but tighten if anything
this is why they invented the quick hit. <sighs> well, I don't have a quick hitch. I got a pry bar. Time to put oil back in the gearbox. So uh, the owner's manual calls for um, 90 to I think 90 to 100 or whatever the heck it is gear oil, and uh, I just put a full quarter of that in, and it didn't fill it. The fill mark on these is to fill it up to the level right before it starts pouring back out of this fill hole right here. That's with the the brush hog level I'm sure because I've already got it on the three-point hitch and the way I've got it adjusted I really can't have this perfectly level so um, if this was tilted back to level a little bit more I would reach that point sooner so I'm gonna not quite fill it all the way up to the edge here but I ran out because I only had one quart of that oil so I'm gonna use this 85 140 because I had it you can see it's been sitting around for a long time, but it was a brand new. I just opened it up. Uh, so we'll top it off with this, even though this oil is a little heavier. I think because uh, the majority of the oil in here is going to be the uh, 90 weight, we should be all right. still a little low but I'm out of oil it should be enough for the test the bottom bevel gear is completely submerged and the uh, other bevel gear is a third submerged so as it rotates it'll distribute the oil uh, again this is just gonna be for a short test seeing as how the mower is supposed to be level during operation anyways I figured I'd uh, try and adjust this top link and this thing seized up tried spraying some thrust penetrant down in there. I was able to 
move it about half an inch and then it's locked up again so help me get some of this penetrant down in there. I'll let that sit for a bit. All right, I readjusted the three-point hitch and I hooked up the PTO shaft. So now I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna bring it up slowly and see how it feels and sounds. And if it sounds okay, I'm gonna bring it up to full RPM. I still have the cutters off. So all I'm gonna be spinning is the stump jumper in the gearbox. So I shouldn't get too much excessive vibration if I do well then I'll know that that stump jumping pan is just too badly out of whack and then I get to reevaluate everything <laughs> topped off the gearbox oil um, it ended up taking about three quarts to fill that thing so now I'm gonna drive it out away from the house so I can bring it up to full rpm and uh, just see how bad it sounds at full you know 575 or whatever the heck it is PTO output I don't want to do it right near the house here because it's gonna be kind of loud and you know if anything decides to fly out from underneath that thing that's metal I don't want it hitting anything valuable all right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna lower the cutter down. I'm gonna bring it up to uh, full RPM. And then what I think I'll do is I'll disengage the PTO and shut the engine off so that this thing can spin down um, with the engine off and we can really isolate the sounds coming out of the thing. sounds better than it did on my first test near the house and I think that's because I was still low on gear oil I mean that might not sound too good to some of you guys but that sounds about the same as it did when I got it and I've been doing quite a bit of cutting with this thing over the past few years so uh, I am uh, I'm still thinking I'm gonna go with it the way it is although one item I would like to address if possible which I think you guys may have noticed in that test run is this has never been aligned correctly so what happens is this shaft is moving off its center line a lot and uh, that might be where a lot of the vibrations coming in part of it is this little bit of slop that's in there but I don't think that's everything initially I thought maybe the shaft input shaft was bent on the gearbox and then uh, later on I realized that if I sight right here on the shaft 
it's rock solid it doesn't move at least I mean I could put an indicator on it and might see some run out but there's no visible detectable run out here so all that run out that I'm seeing is happening in here somewhere I actually think it has to do with this slip clutch which also I don't think it's working correctly so in fact it's kind of a weird deal here this slip clutch because the more modern slip clutches have springs inside here so I don't know if this is just an old design or did somebody remove the springs that were supposed to be in here and essentially put all these washers in here like this now I gotta think those washers are in there to be removed as necessary to change how much tension is on these friction discs hmm well I went on uh, Messick's website and looked at the parts diagram and they have the uh, they have a listing for uh, what they're calling the 368-1 slip clutch assembly and then they also have the 368 I actually can't see a difference between the two but they're made the same way they're actually calling what looks like a bunch of washers to me right here they're calling these a Belleville spring washer so go figure but you know I'm looking at the diagram right now and this looks just like what I'm seeing can't see if that's focusing or not hopefully it is The funny part is that that does not jive at all with um, <laughs> with the current PDF owner's manual for this mower. So they still make the 305. And in the current manual for the 305, there's a section in here, slip clutch adjustment. And it actually talks about a more conventional spring that's being compressed and a nut that would adjust it. And it doesn't even show a picture of the whole clutch, but it talks about adjusting the three of them or adjusting all of the springs equally. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's similar to this, but that instead of, of this deal here, you've actually got a spring in there that controls that tension. And it doesn't show a picture of it, but I'm assuming that what they're doing is they're replacing this setup right here with a more conventional spring. I'll learn something new every day. So a Belleville spring washer is a... Uh... A generic type of component I guess for lack of a better term in other words used in many different industries probably um, and essentially what it is or what it used to be in, in my case is it's a cupped washer that is faced two cupped washers that are put face to face with each other and uh, the uh, convex areas are facing each other and they are made of spring steel so they have a certain amount of compression and spring to them and then they're put together in a stack to create essentially create that spring action now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing what looks to me to be just a stack of either regular washers or the aforementioned spring uh, Belleville spring washers but they've just been flattened out because they're torqued down so damn uh, so damn much. Matter of fact, the top one, if you take a look at this upper one there, there's even like a space in there. So I, I think something is amiss with this thing.
for now. It's still pretty early in the season. There isn't a lot of uh, a lot of growth to cut, but it seems to be working fine. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it's running right now. The vibration is a lot better than it was. You know, considering how out of balance that thing, how wanky that stump jumper still is, I think the main thing is that that bar is still straight enough and that the main forces when it's spinning are uh, exerted by the blades outward. At least that's the theory I'm going to go on. That's how I'm going to run it. All right, so till next time. If you like what you see on the channel, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.